encourage you as we're going through the book of Acts, read along with us. Read the book of Acts. You don't have to read at a fast pace. Read just a few verses each each day. Read a, you know, and, and just follow along. Have that that to where you understand and know what God is saying to you, what God is speaking to you. I believe that if you will uh, read that as we are reading, as we're going through it, it will en- it will enhance what I say and hear for you each week. Because I truly believe that because we need to be in this together, working together, moving together. Today I want to talk about becoming a barrier breaker. Becoming a barrier breaker. You ever uh, gone someplace and seen a barrier in front of something and it wouldn't let you go any further? Maybe maybe you drive up to something and it's like, oh, I can't go that way because there's a barrier there, right? You ever just want to just plow on through it and keep going so you don't have to make a U-turn and go around somewhere else? Anybody else? But you can't, right? Because you'll mess your car up and then you'll have all kinds of issues and then you might even fall. Who knows? There might be a big hole there. You never know. There's a reason why they got that barrier. <clears throat> Can I tell you, though, there's sometimes that there are barriers in our lives and in our, in our paths that we need to break. And we need to bust through them. And we need to bust through them hard and fast and strong and get through them so we can get to the other side that God has something great waiting for us. And so tonight, or today, we're going to talk about breaking barriers. So as we study the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's important that we understand that the gospel message is for all people. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's for all people. It doesn't matter what race they are. It doesn't matter what religion they are. It doesn't matter uh, what, what their home life is like. It doesn't matter what their financial status is like. It doesn't matter The gospel of Jesus Christ is for all people. And it's up to us to tear down any barriers that there may be to keep us from reaching them and preaching the gospel to them. Now, in chapter uh, 10, we're looking at the story of Cornelius. And this is a very important story for all Gentiles, for all of us. This is the moment that the Jews began to understand that the story of Jesus is for all people. It's not just for Jews. Amen? But Jesus came to die for all people. And it doesn't matter, like I said, what race we are, what what we believe, what our family status is like. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. It's for everybody. So look at chapter 10. We have the story of Cornelius. Now, some of you are thinking, who is this Cornelius guy? Well, chapter 10 starts by telling us who he is. Look at verse 1. It says, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. And this is who he is. A centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Now, so here's what we know. We know that he was a righteous man. We also know that he was a generous man. Also, Cornelius was a man with great means because he was a centurion. What was a centurion? It's a high-ranking member of the Italian regiment. And in verse 3, we read that Cornelius has a vision from God. Look at what it says. One day, at about 3 in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. The Lord, or the angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Okay, so the neat thing about this story... And I want you to understand this. 
is God is already at work before anything took place. Is that not cool? Can I tell you that I don't know where you're at, but I want you to know God's already at work. I don't know what you're faced with. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're asking God for. But let me tell you, right now, God is already at work. He never sleeps. Amen? He never stops. He never, he, he, he never uh, goes on vacation. <laughs> he, he, he never looks for uh, ways out. He's always there. He's always on time. And he's always working it out for you right now. So some of us, we come to him and we're struggling and we may be in fear. We may be uh, thinking what's going to happen in the future. We may be wondering what's going on, but I can hear to tell you right now, God is already working on your behalf. Amen? And you will never know the impact that you will make on a person when you begin to start listening and obeying what God is telling you to do. God is speaking to you about something that's going to happen in the future. And you may be sitting there thinking right now, well, I, I just I don't know if that's you know legit. I don't know. If, am I listening to God? Am I just making this stuff up? Is it just my head? Come on. do we? Am I the only one that struggles with this sometimes? God's speaking to us, right? And we hear these voices. We hear these things. I'm, I'm not saying crazy voices. <laughs> It's not what I'm talking about. I know we have some of those too, right? Hey, you know, anybody ever talk to yourself? No one's going to admit it, right? I talk to myself all the time, y'all. That they say that's 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 uh, that's a uh, that's a uh, you know an intelligent person. They tell you intelligent people talk to themselves. They say they say they say that people that talk to themselves are very creative, right? And, you know, I'm telling you, man. I've got it. I've got it going on because I have conversations, y'all. And they say it's okay if you if you if you talk to yourself. It's when you start answering yourself. Hey, I do that too. You know, I'm not I'm not afraid to admit there are times I have crazy moments, right? But it's okay because I I just believe that's me and God having a conversation. Come on, you know what I'm talking about? That's me and God having a conversation, and we're talking and we're getting to know each other. And whether you want to be a part of that or not, that's fine. You don't have to be a part of it. Just know that I'm okay. I promise you. It's just me and God having a conversation. All right? And so there are times that, that when, when God is speaking to you, we listen and then we go and we act what God is telling us to do. And sometimes there are barriers that are in our way that we need to break through those barriers and move to the other side and know that God is real. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And so while the angel is speaking to Cornelius, a voice at the same time is speaking to Peter. Look at verse 9. It says, About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners, it contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. And a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. You know, Peter's struggling with this. You know why Peter's struggling with this? Because he was a Jew. He had been taught these animals were unclean because of the law that was given to Moses. However, God was now showing Peter that everything was made clean because he was giving it to him. He was placing it to him and saying, look, everything that I have is yours. Everything that I have made, I am giving to you. He's letting him also know that, hey, everything that I have created is mine and is for me and can be received what I have to give to them. That is what 
that's what God was revealing to Peter. He was showing Peter that not just for the Jews the gospel message, but also for the Gentiles the gospel message. We have to take the gospel message to everyone. Everyone. People in this church, people outside of this church, people in the next county over, people in the next state over, people in three states over, and all around the world. We have to do the part that God has called us to do to take the gospel message, the gospel message that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the lost. If you remember, that's what the entire book of Luke was about, was Jesus coming to seek and to save the lost. Now we're moving on to the second letter of Luke, and he's telling them, hey, guess what? The gospel message is for everyone. And here's something that I've told you, and some of you may not remember, Luke was a Gentile, and he's writing, and he's saying, hey, this gospel message is not just for you, but it's for me as well. And we have to understand that. God was showing Peter that everything was made clean. Look at verse 17. It says, while Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was, and stopped at the gate. They called out. So remember, these, this is two things that's happening. You've got the scene over here at Cornelius' house and everything that went on in the first few verses. Then it, it kind of gives you a cut scene over to what's happening at Peter's house. Or, or not Peter's house, but where Peter was. He was at Simon the Tanner's house. And it's giving you what's taking place there, the vision, the Everything that's happening with Peter, he's on the roof, he's, he's, the sheet comes down, it's lowered at all a bunch of animals that they weren't able to eat before. Okay, And then now these two groups are merging together because they've made the journey from Cornelius' house to where Simon is and they're knocking on the door. And here we are. And it says in verse 19, While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, Three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. Now, this is something that's important too. I want you to understand this. Now, we may not, we won't know a lot about this until the next chapter or two, but I want you to understand it's important that Peter invited these people into his home. Jews weren't supposed to invite Gentiles to come in and fellowship with them. It was the law. It was against what they were supposed to do, against tradition. And it says, the next day, Peter started out with them. So now, not only has Peter invited them to be guests in his house, now he's going with them to their house. That's another no-no. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. When they, so, we have to understand that when they arrive, Peter is still trying to process all of this. This is all happening for them really fast. Understand what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> they've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're going around. They're, they're preaching the gospel message. Uh, the religious leaders are trying to kill them, you know. They've, Saul has joined their side. And, and now here this is, and now they're all of a sudden, they're realizing, oh, we, this is for everybody. This is not just us. There are Gentiles that are wanting to know about this gospel message. So he's trying to process all this. And these men come to his house, and even though it's against Jewish custom to associate with Gentiles, Peter's inviting them in. And we can see all throughout history, we can see barriers that divide people. We got to break division, amen? We can no longer, as, and I'm, when I say church, I'm not just talking about our church. I'm talking about the church in general. We can no longer be divided. We must be united and work together to see the gospel message moved forward. Amen? 
But there are cultural barriers, there are racial barriers, there are economic barriers, and we have to break down those barriers so that the gospel message can move forward. And here's the great thing, is the gospel message challenges us to do this. It challenges us to do this. It challenges us to break the barrier so that we can move it forward and share with one another. So we must find it inside ourselves to reach out to those who are different, right? Can you? I could look around this congregation and we're all different, right? We may have some beliefs, and I'm not talking about spiritual beliefs. I'm talking about we may have some the ways that we handle our household, the way that we do things, the way that we drive our car, the way that we go shopping, the way that we get on the internet, the way that we watch TV, the shows that we like, the movies that we like. We all have differences, right? But we have some things that we like as like we like the same thing as well. We all have differences. We are all different. Thank God that God made us all different. Amen? Can you imagine if we were all the same? We'd just be like a bunch of robots, wouldn't we? You know, what can I do for you? Yeah. You know, it'd be the same thing over and over again, just every day. But we're all different. We don't have to agree with someone to love them. Amen? There's way too much hate in this world. And it's time that we break the barriers of hate and we show one another love. I don't have to agree with you to love you. Amen? I don't have to agree with you to love you. Jesus said to love. He said to love your enemies, right? Bless those who what? Curse you. Right? So we're to lift one another up and we're to help one another so we can break any barriers that there might be that keeps us from moving forward in Christ. Look at verse 24. It says, the following day he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. And as Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. And while talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Can I say this? God spoke to Peter. Peter obeyed. Do you hear what I'm saying? He didn't wait. He did it immediately. God was speaking to him to do something out of his comfort zone, something that tradition had told him not to do. And he said, I'm going to listen to what God's telling me, and I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I want to show you what's going to happen here. Verse 29. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. He went right immediately. May I ask why you sent for me? And then Cornelius answered, three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour. At three in the afternoon, suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered gifts to the poor. Send a Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. <coughs> Excuse me. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. Let me say this. God put it upon Peter to go spread the gospel message. We're about to see what Peter tells them. If God is telling you to tell someone about the gospel message, you have to be obedient. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm telling you? It may be the only opportunity that person gets to hear the gospel message. You must be obedient to what God is saying. You must listen to what God is telling you. And you must, you say, yeah, but I may stutter or I may mess up. Guess what? It's okay. God will give you the words to say. Just open up your mouth and say it. Be obedient. Be a barrier breaker. Don't let there be any barriers that keep you from spreading the gospel. Look what he says. <clears throat> Verse 34. 
Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts, I love this, from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism of that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was, uh, he was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose excuse me, from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hmm. Isn't this amazing? Peter just gave them the gospel message. He just presented to them the gospel message. He let them know who Jesus was. He let them know, and he, and he, and he confirmed to them what they already had heard about, what they already had knew. He's confirming it to them, saying, hey, you know this. You know that Jesus died on the cross. You know that he rose from the grave. This is the greatest story that is ever told. You have the greatest story at your fingertips that has ever been told. And you get opportunities and chances to tell that story to someone else. The power of the gospel to transcend cultural boundaries and reach the hearts of people from all walks of life. That's what we need to do. Amen? Our message, it's not just for people who look like us or think like us or act like us or do the same things that we do. It's for everyone. Amen? The gospel message is for everyone, and we've got to be bold in sharing the message with everyone. Look at verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Can I just say that as all this was taking place, the Holy Spirit comes in and confirms what is to be done. The Holy Spirit comes in and confirms that the gospel message is for everyone. It's not just for you and me. We can't keep this message to ourselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? We cannot keep the message of Jesus Christ to ourselves. We can't just hoard it amongst ourselves. We must get the message out. We must let people know. We must tell people the good news that Jesus came and he died on the cross and he rose again so that you can have eternal life, so that you can have victory, so that you can live a life that's free without any barriers keeping you from moving forward so that you can present the gospel to the next person. That's what we are to do. That's who we are to be. That's who God has called us to be. The Spirit confirms this. When people who are different than you accept Jesus as their Savior, we got to welcome them into the family of God because God has already accepted them. Amen? So I believe this chapter, I, it's, it's a great story, is it not? I love this story. This confirms that the gospel message is not just for Jews but it's for you and me. Amen? It's for everyone. It's for all of us. We all have an opportunity, and we see that, the confirmation of the Holy Spirit confirming by coming on and baptizing them 
in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptism moved upon them. They began to speak in tongues. There was a power that came in that room. But this gospel, the God's heart, it, he challenges us to look past any prejudice that we may have and move forward. Each of us, we got to become barrier breakers. Amen? Let me ask you a question this morning, and I'm coming to a close. Are you willing to reach across cultural, racial, and social barriers to share the gospel? Is there anything that's keeping you from sharing the gospel message with somebody? You say, well, they don't like me. Then I'd start praying for them. Because God may be speaking to you right now to talk to that person. What did he say? He said, love your enemies. Did he not? Bless those who curse you. We're to love them. We're to show them the love of Jesus. We're to reach across the aisle. And whether, whether, whether we think that they are for us or not, we're to show them the love. And we are to tell them the message of Jesus. So we got to let God break down any barriers that may exist in this church. Amen? We prayed Wednesday night. <clears throat> One of the things that we prayed about was any uh, racism that had plagued this church from the past. I wasn't here then. I've heard stories of things. But can I tell you that as long as I'm here, we're going to move forward and we're going to love those that God has embraced us, given us. We're going to, any walls that might be built up, any barriers that might be built up to keep us from moving forward are going to be broken. I want us all to stand this morning all stand unified together. We're going to pray and we're going to ask God to break down any barriers that there may be that have come up.